Oh, hi. If you're over 40 and struggling to read or see small things on your phone, maybe you're pulling things out a little bit to see more clearly, or maybe at the end of a long work day at the computer, you get headaches or eye strain. Well, what's going on and what can we do about it? Well, today, let's talk about presbyopia. <clears throat> hi. My name is Dr. Joshua Cohen. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist at Cohen Laser and Vision Center in Boca Raton, Florida. And presbyopia is a inevitable consequence of getting older. In fact, presbyopia means presbys from the Greek word meaning old man and opia, the suffix meaning vision or sight. So old man's sight is presbyopia, meaning all of us, if we're lucky enough to live long enough, will experience this unfortunate phenomenon which is a consequence of changes within the eye, more specifically in the lens, which is the structure internal to the eye, just behind the iris, that is the only flexible optical organ in our bodies, meaning the cornea is the front of the eye, also responsible for focusing light, is fixed. Those structural elements of the cornea do not change. But the lens does. Not only does it become less flexible as we get older, it eventually crystallizes to the point where it becomes a cataract, and we'll talk about that in other videos. But presbyopia is a process of the proteins in the lens becoming more mature and more firm. And therefore, the optical properties of the lens start to deteriorate. Now, when we're young, the flexibility in the lens is at its maximum. And that means that we can see far, we can see up close, ideally without any problem, without any need for glasses at all. Now, presbyopia starts to occur around age 40 or 45 for most people. And what happens is that the ability of the lens to change its shape starts to diminish. So what exactly is going on? Well, in order for us to see far away, our natural lens inside the eye is in a relaxed state, meaning it's as thin as possible. And that just has to do with the optics of seeing far away. When we are looking outside, driving, watching television, or looking at a sports event at the end of the field, we are relaxing our muscles in our eye. Those muscles are specifically the ciliary muscles, and they circumscribe peripherally around the lens 360 degrees, and the lens is suspended and connected to those muscles through tiny little fibers called zonules. And that basically is just how the lens stays floating centrally within the eye. Now, when we have to zoom in, the lens has to change its shape and accommodation is that process. And the way that that's achieved is by muscles inside the eye, those ciliary muscles actually contract. What happens is those zonules then loosen and as the zonules loosen, the tension on the lens relaxes, which actually allows the lens to stretch front to back. In other words, it gets a little bit fatter. And that fattening of the lens allows us to see up close through accommodation. Now, the difference between our ability to see far away and up close is called the accommodative reserve, meaning how many diopters of nearsighted ability do you have? And when we're young, we have many, many diopters of ability, and that diminishes at basically a fixed rate as we get older. Eventually, once we hit 40, 45, we start to lose the amount of diopter correction that we need to see up close. That's why you need reading glasses. And you notice that reading glasses ha often have a prescription of plus one, plus 1.5, plus two and a quarter, etc. These plus diopter corrections means that they are filling in the gaps that our lens isn't able to do anymore. So what can we do about this? Well, there are a few different strategies that most people take when they're trying to see up close once they hit 40 or 45. And the most common by far is reading glasses. Now you can get a set of lenses like this that have basically that are usually kind of slender so you can see over them. And basically when I look down, I am now seeing through the optical center of these lenses and I can see up close. And the higher the diopter power, the closer the focal length is. So if I'm reading really small text, like on a pill bottle, for example, I might want a higher power than if I was looking far away at a computer screen, for example, which is a few feet away. But let's say that if I was of a certain age where I had no accommodation left whatsoever, let's say I was in my 60s or 70s, then I might need a two and a half or three diopter lens to see up close at this distance. But to see the computer, I might go down to a 1.5 or a two, just as an example. The next most common thing that people do is get a vision correcting lens if they need correction for distance as well as reading, they get a bifocal lens or a progressive lens. 
And the difference means that the top of the lens, of the glasses specifically, has the prescription for distance. And then as you view the bottom aspects of the frame, then the reading power begins to increase. And this can be a gradual process, like a progressive lens, or there could be a fixed line at the very bottom. And that means that of the top, it's distance. At the bottom, it's clear. And there's really no in-between. Of course, you can get a trifocal, which has two lines of separation, so three distinct areas of focus, distance, mid-range, and up close, but those are less common now that we have progressive lenses. But the advantage, just so you know, of a fixed line bifocal or trifocal is that you have a wider area or a wider sweet spot, if you will, of seeing, and you have less distortion in the periphery. So progressives are great because you kind of have a full continuum of vision from distance to near, but there is some distortion along the edges and it does take some adjustment. Some people have a hard time go going up steps, for example, because of the difference of magnification. I would say that overall, most people treat presbyopia with bifocals or progressives or just reading glasses if their distance prescription is neutral. But there are some other options as well. The next most common option is contact lenses. And contacts are interesting because contacts allow you to change the focus between each eye. So you can have a multifocal contact, which has different focal lengths within the lens of the eye for distance and near, and those are also quite popular. But sometimes contacts can shift around the eye and some people find bifocal contacts less tolerable. So you wanna try that with your eye doctor before you jump into multifocal contacts, in my opinion. Or you could do what's called monovision. A monovision is really interesting. Monovision leaves your dominant eye most commonly for distance. So whatever prescription your contact has for distance is basically left alone, but the reading prescription is dialed into your other eye. Let's say your non-dominant eye, like in my case, my left eye. So what would that look like? Let's say that I had a prescription, let's say of minus 0.75. That means that I was a little bit nearsighted, but I was old enough where I still needed some help up close. If I want to see distance alone, I would put minus 0.75 contacts in both eyes and I would see far away. But since I'm presbyopic, now that I'm only seeing far away, my lens isn't able to see up close anymore. So by putting those contacts in, I lose all my reading ability. So what can we do about it? Well, we could actually just treat one eye and leave the other eye at minus 0.75. That would mean that it's almost like the left eye, the eye that doesn't have a contact in, has a plus 0.75 reading glass on it. Even though the optics are a little bit different, that's one way to think about it. So it's almost like I have one eye that's neutral when I wear my contact in, and one eye that is left a little bit nearsighted so that I can see up close. Now 0.75 has a focal length kind of far away, over a meter away. So it might not really give me the amount of vision up close that I need, so I still may need some additional help. Then in that case, I could add additional power to my other eye, let's say plus one in the contact or plus 1.5 in the contact. That would be a net effect of a plus one of a plus 1.75 in my left eye or my reading eye. That would bring it up even closer. And the older I get, the more reading power that I would need. And monovision is also achieved in surgical treatments as well. So LASIK, for example, if you're over 40, your doctor may wanna talk with you about your options for reading up close, because if we correct distance only by treating the cornea, then the lens isn't able to fill the gaps up close, so you might wanna consider monovision. And we often will do what's called a spectacle trial, where you put on some trial frames and you kinda of walk around for a little bit and see if you can get used to monovision. Monovision is difficult for some patients because they lose some depth perception because the eyes are not focusing on the same thing at the same time, and they can cause some dizziness or some distortion, um, and sometimes it's just not tolerated. Most people can tolerate it, but there might be a build-in period where you kind of have to get acclimated and used to monovision before we opt for permanent surgery. But monovision is a great option for patients who can tolerate it. We can also achieve monovision surgically with cataract surgery. Now, because the lenses that we put into the eye are made of a fixed acrylic material, it's a hard plastic that doesn't flex, just like the old lens inside the eye naturally, then if we do cataract surgery and we treat the eye for distance, now we realize that you will definitely need reading glasses with standard cataracts. Now there are multifocal implants that we can talk about and that has different focal lengths for distance or mid range or even up close, depending on the optics of those lenses. And we'll talk about that in other videos, but generally standard cataract surgery treating only for distance will result in needing reading glasses most of the time for anything within a couple feet of your face. So that is something to be aware of even if you're nearsighted going into surgery. So for patients who are nearsighted, let's say minus three, minus 350, they're using glasses all the time for distance. They might even take their glasses off when they're up close. After cataract surgery, they're not gonna be minus 350 anymore. They're now gonna be neutral for distance, zero, hopefully. 
So that means that if they're zero, they now need an additional plus two or plus three to see up close again. And that is something certainly to be aware of. There is also a drop available now called Viewity, which is a derivative of pilocarpine. And pilocarpine is a medicine that's been around for a long time that actually stimulates the accommodating muscle within the eye to allow you to zoom in. So basically, it's almost like if you're doing, you know, dips or pull-ups at the gym and you need a little bit of weight to assist you, that's what these drops do. They stimulate the muscles within the eye, that ciliary muscle complex I was referring to, and allows the lens to flex as much as possible. Now, fun fact, when you get dilated, the reason why you can't see up close after dilation is because the dilation drops that are called cycloplegic medicines are medicines that paralyze the ability of the ciliary muscles to work. And that lasts for a few hours. That means that you can see far away after dilation. You'll be a little bit blurry because of how wide the pupil is, but you won't be able to see up close typically. And that is due to the arresting of those muscles or the paralyzation of those muscles due to those medications. That is something to be aware of when you go in for your dilated eye exam that, yeah, you could probably still drive home with sunglasses, but you might not be able to read. So if you're a student and you're getting a dilated exam, just be aware of that. So presbyopia is a very common phenomenon, and there are a lot of interesting approaches that doctors can use to treat presbyopia outside of just getting reading glasses from the drugstore. There are also some new treatments available, implants within the cornea, that uh, have been around, you know, different iterations have been around for several years. One of them is called a camera implant, which uses the pinhole effect that extends what's called your depth of focus. So you can see distance and near out of just one eye. We also have extended depth of focus cataract lenses that do a similar thing based on the optics of those lenses. And there's even new treatments where the corneal shape can be changed to cause a multifocal phenomenon within each eye due to what's called spherical aberration. There's a lot of interesting science behind it and the optics can get quite complicated, but there are a lot of solutions that you can talk about. As you can see, presbyopia is one of these phenomenons that for patients who are you know, between 40 and 65, there's a lot of different options out there, but there's not a perfect solution for anyone. A lot of people might be okay with monovision. Some people might be okay with multifocal contacts. Some people might elect to have multifocal lens replacement surgery like cataract surgery. Um, and some people just might just struggle and squint. So there's a lot of things that, you know, a lot of factors that go into this. It has to do with your baseline prescription. It has to do with your age. And it has to do with how bothered you are and how much of your life is done within a few feet. So I invite you to have a conversation with your eye doctor about different options for treatment of presbyopia. And at Colon Laser Vision Center, we, we spend a lot of time on this because it really is something that's very critical and something we all are going to have to experience at some point. So if you found this content helpful, please think about hitting like and subscribe. It means a lot to help the channel grow. And check out our website at www.colonlaser.com for more information. Thank you so much for your time, and I will see you in the next one.